So the Cali Effect and his luscious dreadlocks posted a video today that covered a really interesting topic about the ban list and other things that Konami's been doing as of late. I don't think anything's going to change anytime soon, but if Cali Effect's going to light this fire, let's at least see if we can spread it to the whole forest and watch it burn. Don't start forest fires, kids. Also, Cali Effect, we know how Squamata's doing, but how's the Ultra Banana doing? That was probably a really terrible impression. For all y'all new subscribers, this is the Ultra Banana. This is the Ultra Ball. And we together are one big hard family. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hit that bell so you can be part of the A gang. I'm going to call Child Protective Services. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1100 ladder, or 1100? Yeah, I had to think about that for a second because we're only like 10 subscribers away from 1200 subscribers, so all of the support would be very much appreciated. So, hope you're all having a fantastic day. Cali Effect posted a really interesting video today talking about how Konami could improve uh, communication with the players, specifically with the ban list. He talked about how back in 2017, Konami stopped putting dates on the ban list, for those of you who haven't been playing since then. Uh, this, not, this was not how the ban list used to be run. If you remember back in the day, 2012, 2013, 2011, all these previous years, we usually got a ban list every six months, and I think before that was like every nine months, if I remember correctly. So we would go a very long time without getting a ban list, but we would also know when it would drop. And at the very least, like, at least we had that end date. And it's interesting that he mentioned Kevin Tour in his video because... Kevin Tewart actually posted an article talking about the Forbidden Limited list back in March of 2012. And that was because the March 2012 ban list was dog shit. And to set the stage for you, March 2012 was a format where uh, Tengu Plants and I believe Tour Guide from the Underworld was out during that time. Pretty sure it was because I remember Tour Guide was like upwards of like 150 to 200. I think it maxed out at like $250 a copy because uh, it was only in Secret Rare and everybody wanted it. And so Tengu Plants, aka Plant Synchro, was a deck that was just dominating everything. It was tier one. There were a couple other decks that were able to keep up. But then we got Windups, and then we also got uh, Insectors. And Windups were just tearing everything apart with hand looping you for five cards or six if they had Pot of Avarice. And so people were like, Konami needs to hit these cards. Well, when we got the March 2012 ban list, Konami hit a bunch of stuff to plant Synchro because that's what they were focused on hitting at the time. One, windups and Insectors were too new, but also number two, we were locked into the same OCG ban list around that time. So anything that happened in the OCG would also happen here in the TCG 99% of the time. There was one time where we were locked in with the OCG and like one thing was different on the TCG balance and it was like mind crush went to three compared to the OCG where it didn't. That should have been a red flag back then, but we were just, you know, oblivious to it. And so we knew what the balance was going to be even before it dropped on the TCG website. And so because of that, people got pissed because it's like you're not hitting the cards that are an issue. And so Kevin Tour posted a whole article about it, talking about how it is that they form a ban list. It's a very interesting read. It's still on the Konami like event coverage page. Uh, if you want to go read it, it's a very interesting read and very insightful, something that I wish Konami would do more often. And they've gotten better with it uh, as recently as like just one or two formats ago, where they actually would post an article on their uh, like official blog page that I was just mentioning, where they would talk about hits on the ban list. Uh, like if a YCS was going on, they'd say, hey, we're here with the new ban list and here are the changes that we saw, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they would kind of give a couple little sentences talking about like, hey, these were hit because of this reason. And it's it's great. Like I've talked about before on the channel, Konami explains whatever kind of ban list. I've done that for a few videos now and it's very much appreciated Konami. However, we do need some sort of end date on the ban list again. And I've been saying this for years um, because it, it's just bullshit, you know. Even if you have to delay it, or even if you just go back to like what we had before, you know, no sooner than or no later than June or July, at least then we know what kind of month to expect. You know, like for this one, if they said no sooner than June 10th, well, then we would know, okay, we've got until June 10th to play with our cards before we sell them and, you know, whatever. At least then we have something to look forward to. 
Um, you know, when you look at something like even Master Shits, aka Master Duel, and the OCG, both of those have end dates on their ban list. So if you go on Master Shits, you'll see that this next ban list update will be, let's say, July 10th, just pulling a number out of my butt. And then the OCG, the next update after this will be, let's say, October 1st. You know, why is it that they get dates, but we don't? Like, why is it that, like Cali Effect said, Konami's just playing RNG with our ban list date? And along with that, he also talked about the policy documents. And this is something that when he discussed it, kind of perked my ears up and kind of got me thinking because I'm like, you know, it does seem a bit sus. Uh, the big example that he gave was uh, Code Breaker, Code, I don't remember his name, but anyway, some dude on Twitter who was also on Twitch, he got banned and essentially with the whole, oh, Distant Coder, that's what it was. Uh, our homie Valley D told me the whole story behind Distant Coder like a year ago. So I'm going off of cliff notes here. But essentially from what I understand happened, he was poking fun at some dude who was carrying Master Duel on his back. And because the guy, I guess, was really liked by, by Konami, they banned Distant Coder. And then Distant Coder, I think, came out on Twitter and said, I've been really depressed as of late and was like backpedaling. It was a whole thing. I didn't even keep up with it. I don't give a shit about drama. It, I really didn't care. Um, but because of that... Cali Effect also talked about how they've been updating the banned players list. And then someone was funny in his comment section where they said they update the banned players list more than the actual ban list, which is really true. And that's actually really comical. But they banned one of Cali Effect's friends and they didn't even tell this guy that he was banned. So, of course, I went on to double check and make sure I wasn't banned. And I'm not banned, luckily. I looked up my Kasi ID number or whatever and it wasn't on there. So I'm not banned. But I checked because... You know, in case you haven't noticed, your boy does a lot of shit talking on YouTube about Master Shits and about Konami and the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I love the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I've said this before, and I I'm going to probably say it another million more times as I make videos on YouTube. Because whether someone from Konami is watching or not, I want to make it clear. You know, I take on a persona, an entertainer persona, when I'm here on YouTube making a video. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be just you know, dull and boring and be like, the game is in a bad spot, guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be entertaining. I'm going to be saying, you know, Konami, you done fucked up. You're doing this shit wrong. You're, you're laying your boo-boo stains all over the floor and just hoping that no one looks at the turds. Like, it, it we're, we're going to have some fun. And I even had people too, whenever I had that anonymous email from like, what, almost a year ago at this point where I said a Konami employee emailed me the ban list. Like, I don't know. I thought it was something fun to talk about. Maybe it really wasn't an employee. I think it was just a troll. But someone was like, they had commented and said, oh, you're going to get banned for this video. And it's like, really? I'm going to get banned for this shit? And now with the policy document update, I'm looking at it like, yeah, I probably could have got banned for that shit. Um, so I need to kind of watch it. And this goes for anybody. I mean, with the whole Distant Coder thing, that was just from Distant Coder talking to some Master Duel guy on uh, Twitch and like sometimes live streaming uh, or on Twitter, excuse me, and then sometimes live streaming on Twitch and he got banned. Um, was it a bit of a stretch? I'm not familiar enough with the situation to really know. But the whole point being is that Konami, I've thanked you multiple times for being transparent about the ban list and saying, you know, hey, this is why we hit certain things after the fact and posting those articles. I think that that's great. And when it comes to someone like me, you know, I talk mad shit about the game, but yeah, I love the game. Like, you know, if you meet me outside of YouTube, whether it's a regional YCS, whatever, you know, I'm going to be a chill dude. Like, I'm not going to be, you know, talking shit to my opponent if I were to get like a feature match and be like, what's your name, bro? It doesn't matter what your name is, bro. You suck at this game. Like, what you doing? Like, no, we're, we're not going to be doing none of that. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's all for entertainment purposes, right? Um, but this is something that needs to be addressed, you know? Konami, there has to be some sort of happy medium where it doesn't look like you've just gotten pissed off and said, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home because you got pissed off at a few people on Twitter saying, oh, no sooner than, oh, no later than. So then you just change it to in a few months. And it's just like, bro, why? Like, it just makes no sense to me. And something else that Cali Effect said too was like, Konami, you're making it seem like you care just about the money and not about the player base, which... Uh, Cali, bro, you know companies, all they do is give a fuck about your wallet. Like, that's that's all that it is, pimp. Uh, Konami don't give two shits about the ban list. They're going to make the ban list be what they can do to push product. Like, that's all it's ever been. Um, you know, don't don't let them fool you into anything. You know, that's, that's just the unspoken truth. That's what it is. 
um, they're going to hit things so that people will play different decks and push new product and, and whatever, you know, tier element had its time in the limelight and now they just, they had to hit that shit. It was also tier zero. But I feel like Konami is truly not going to care about the ban list until really they see an active voice from the community. Not just a couple trolls saying no sooner than, no later than on Twitter, but really people like me, Cali Effect, DZ, Femco40, all these people that are much bigger than me talking about this and, and having the fire spread, so to speak, like I said at the beginning of the video. You know, it's it's different whenever I'm just, you know, posting a video, talking smack and being an entertainer. This is the real Avery that you're seeing. Like this is the Yu-Gi-Oh player Avery who, you know, wants to see the game continue to grow. You know, there's a reason why the ban list is even better than other card games because Yu-Gi-Oh! is the only card game that has a ban list. You know, Pokemon does set rotation. Magic the Gathering does set rotation. For those who don't know what that is, set rotation essentially means that you can only play cards from this set to this set. Can you imagine if Konami bet with Yu-Gi-Oh! where they said, hey, from LOB to Raging Battle, you can no longer play these cards. Like, that would completely destroy the card pool in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, that's what makes it fun is that you can take cards from Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, the very first set from 2002, and play them in a 2023 deck, assuming it's not like on the ban list or something obviously you know you could take horn of the unicorn and play it in your deck and that came out back in the early 2000s you know that's what makes it fun seeing what cards are at two and at one like it, it's very exciting in that regard it's like a little christmas gift and i think having more transparency whether it's on twitter or whatever saying hey guys we're gonna put a ban list out next week you know even just something like that like why can't you do more of that i don't understand and I'll end it on this. Cali Effect made the point of, you know, if you need someone to be the mouthpiece for your company, I'll volunteer. And I'll throw my hat in the ring too. I'll volunteer. You know, I'll, shit, I'm willing to be a mouthpiece. I'm willing to be a JD2020, like how he was for Call of Duty back in the day. If y'all know who JD2020 is, you're a true OG. Uh, and that doesn't mean like my content would change if it was me. I'm not saying it is going to be me. My channel's way too fucking small. I doubt Konami's even heard of me. Um, but it's the point that I'm willing to be that for a game that I have been playing since, God, I was seven years old and got competitive with it in 2008. I love this game. I want to see it continue to grow. I want to see it do well. But when you have companies like Magic and Pokemon who communicate with their player base so much more, why don't you? And it boggles my mind. Like, who who's supposed to be our point of contact? You know, even like Activision with their developers and stuff for Call of Duty, they have someone who's like the PR person, you know, back in the day of Call of Duty Black Ops in 2010, it was JD 2020. Uh, Treyarch now has David Vondahar, like, you know, these people who are like the communication managers who, you know, they can talk to. I have a degree in communication. So like, I could literally be a PR person slash punching bag that the community beats up on. Cause like, that would be my job. Like that, that's literally what communications is. So... I wholeheartedly agree with Callie Effect. Callie, I hope you see this video, man. If not, well, then it is what it is. But uh, I totally 100% agree with him. Do I think Konami's going to change? Fuck no. I think that they're... Honestly, I think a portion of it is that they're held down by their masters in Japan. I think that they have the last say on a lot of these things. I think a lot of the American uh, members of the company, I guess, for lack of a better term, they want to be interactive with the community. And I think that they just aren't allowed to. So, guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. I know it was a bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to make sure I hit on all my points. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.